It's summertime, which means you need somewhere to sit outside. So we're doing three levels of Adirondack chairs. Let's go. I'm Jordan, this is Bear. We're gonna do the beginner Adirondack chair. So all you really need is some two by materials that you can get at your local box store, a circular saw and a drill, and tape measure. So I went ahead off camera and I squared up my boards uh, because lumber that comes from box stores typically isn't square. If you don't have the tools, no worries, you don't have to do it. It just makes life a little easier. And we have the tools, so I figured why not. You can make all these cuts using a miter saw if you have it, but if not, all you really need is a circular saw, square, and a tape measure. So let's break down this lumber. So now we are on to the legs, but on the legs you have to do two 20 degree cuts and this might be intimidating without a miter saw, but actually you can use a speed square. So this is gonna be your pivot point. You hold that and then you just slide this side till it is parallel with the bottom edge and that's 20. So then this is 20 degrees. You can actually clamp this down to give you a guide if you're using a circular saw. We got everything cut now. It's time to assemble. News team, assemble! <laughs> We're gonna make the frame first. You'll have a plan, so follow the plans, buy the plans, build it. God bless America. It helps to lay out things. And we're gonna pre-drill these as well. These screws say you don't have to, but I always recommend it so you don't blow out wood. Make sure you place your screws nicely so you don't wanna plan on covering them with putty, kinda decent, not super DIY. So for this part, I'm gonna use pocket holes. If you plan on doing a lot more projects, it's really worth to have. If you don't wanna get one, what you can do is call toenail the screws in. You just come in at an angle. These screws are gonna be relatively hidden, so it doesn't matter which method you do. This is just a little easier and faster. It gives it a little more strength, but whatever you're comfortable with and whatever's in your budget. Uh, I got the seat pan in, now I'm doing the back. So I waited to do the back support to put that in at the end because I wanted to figure out how much spacing I wanted back here. If you're worried about getting the angle on this right, it's just make sure this board is flush with your legs because they're already at 20 degrees. That's gonna give you that 20 degree incline or recline, I guess you would say. Just moving this up. I took an extra piece of wood and I cut it to 19 and a half so that this way, this stays up. See how it flexes? Put that up, it'll help you keep this nice and square as long as you have a flat surface. Go ahead in, head and screw in the back slats. I forgot to do this when I was building the frame, but the reason we did this 20 degree cut is kind of give it a nicer look. I put the front end up on some scraps, and then take another piece of scrap, and we're gonna draw a straight line across. We're gonna cut that off, and then it's gonna give it a nice look. Actually, that turned out really nice. Probably around this over, because it's a little sharp. You did it. Probably could have made the head a little longer. Bear! Bear, come here, buddy. What do you think? Their first project, huh? Yeah, all I really left to do is sand it. And since I'm gonna paint this, I'm gonna use Bondo to fill in all the holes and imperfections in the wood, because you'll never tell whenever you hit it with that paint. And uh, I'm not gonna bore you guys with that footage. So that's it for the beginner chair. Uh, I'm gonna sand it, finish it, and then paint it. And yeah, this thing, it only took me about two hours, actually. It's a nice little weekend project. Do some bonding with your dog or your significant other. I have bear. All right guys, I'm Sam and I'm gonna be building the intermediate project. Unfortunately, I'm doing it alone. I didn't know we were supposed to bring a dog for this project. I'll work on it for next time. So for the intermediate build, we're gonna upgrade that material and go with an outdoor friendly wood. We're gonna use cedar on this one. We're even gonna get a little bit fancy and use the CNC to make templates to make it easier than ever to replicate and make multiple of these projects. So, like I said, we're gonna use CNC'd templates. I had Jordan, who's holding the camera, help me with some of the CAD stuff because I'm computer illiterate. But don't worry, because if you buy the plans, 
for I think mine and John's. Jordan's you don't really need CNC templates because they're rectangles, but these ones were getting a little fancier. So these are gonna be available both think digital and physical versions. We are going to make these with the templates because there's a couple of really important benefits to doing so. One, we can make identical parts that are both the single chair looks more symmetrical and if you were gonna make a bunch of them, it would be exactly the same. So this board here is what it's gonna be, the arms, you know. Just threw this one on here, got a pencil, I traced this one around. Oop. Oops, don't draw on it. All right, so you have the one, right? Now I'm coming over to this one, and as I was about to do it, notice right here, uh-oh, we gotta give it a knot. So then I started playing around with it. I can flip it. Now when I trace it, we'll be able to cut out that knot. So for the legs and the stringers, they really should be a thicker material. Unfortunately, the store only had like three quarter inch material. So I'm going to glue up all the structural pieces like the legs, the stringers. So those end up being closer to like an inch and a half. They'll just be a little sturdier. I would recommend going with an inch and a half material and saving yourself this step. But at least for the demonstrative purposes and for a chair that's gonna probably end up at my house, I'm fine with doing a laminated glue up like this. There'll also be screws through all of it, so I'm not too terribly concerned about any of it. Just so you know why I'm doing this, now you know. So I did trace these out and I did start to cut them out. In hindsight, I probably should have just glued them up rectangular, it would have been way easier than trace them and then cut them. But I'm still leaving everything big and rough for this glue up stage and then I will come back and cut them all to the exact shape after. It's a way cleaner layout if you do it this way. So we had to wait overnight. We are back now to routing out the templates. Great little trick to use when you're doing the templates is what we call the blue tape trick. So you just take some regular old painter's tape. We have the piece that we rough cut out yesterday to our template. You get those kind of lined up so the way they're gonna go. Open them up like a sandwich. Put a little bit of tape along the pieces and you wanna try to match the tape layout from one side to the other. And then you take the glue, squiggle it on one side. This is CA glue, cyanoacrylate glue, super glue. With the activator, spray the glue on one side, the activator on the other. And then you're gonna, as closely as you can, line up to your pencil marks. Give it just a little press, make sure that you're good as far as you're covered the whole shape. And now you have a template that's perfectly secured to it. Only thing that's actually holding it is the stickiness of the blue tape so it doesn't actually ruin your piece or the template so you can reuse it. All the shapes are made. They're a little bit rough on the back, so I'm gonna hit them with the sander real quick, round it over everything, then we can finally assemble this mother sucker. We have all the parts made. Now we screw the chair again. Jesus. Hey, real quick, while Sam's Fabric cobble in his chair together, I wanna to take a second to thank Woodcraft for sponsoring this project. Woodcraft's been supporting us for years and they're absolutely bar none our favorite store for all things woodwork. Whether you're looking for tools, materials, or just some gidgets and doodads, yeah, Woodcraft's got it all. They've got a killer online store as well and they've got, I think, locations in 74 different cities across the country. They're our favorites and we highly recommend it. I got a link down in the description if you wanna check out more from them. And uh, now I'm gonna go check out whatever the hell Sam's up to now. So yeah, thanks Woodcraft. have everything kind of at the right angles and geometry. So now I'm gonna put some screws through the side here to lock in the seat angle to the arm leg assembly that we put together. Put the back slats on, a little bit of finish, and uh, we'll be drinking beers. So we're really, really close. And I'm super happy with how this is looking. I think it's time to test this thing. Oh. 
Ooh. Actually, really, really nice. I think it's a little narrow. Maybe it's just the armrests are too far in. Like, it, it fits me fine, but like John wouldn't probably be able to fit in this. Now it is time to spray. Our friends at Total Boat sent us this new finish that I haven't tried yet, but it's like a durable UV protected outdoor. Let me grab the bag. It's this rugged clear gloss finish, fast drying, one hour. You can spray it, you can roll it, you can brush it. it. Seems like a super awesome product and the perfect application for these outdoor chairs. So I'm gonna use it. So thank you to friends at Total Boat for hooking up with some cool finishes. I got some in the gun already. So you guys know the drill, let us spray. Now I'm John and for the pro version, we're gonna be using multiple material species. We're going to light this thing on fire to make it water resistant and it's gonna rock, literally. We're gonna make it rock. Let's go. So before we cut any wood, we need to make some templates for my chair. So let's fire up Miss Piggy. So before you get too squirrely, you can purchase these. We're gonna be able to sell these to you uh, if you want to make this chair specifically. But in my experience, I've, I've probably done three dozen or so Adirondack chairs in my day. Get yourself some templates to make things consistent and start from there. Now we don't have any rough cut lumber that we're gonna be using for the base uh, structure. So we're gonna be using a slab, which means I have to hump this slab out of the store and then we'll lay things out on oh, my back. I'm gonna try to like lay these out. It's best to use the grain and the wood. So what you just watched there is me getting everything milled down to thickness and now we're gonna retrace all of our patterns. This uh, entire plan is built to uh, work with one and a half inch materials for those of you that have that readily available. So we just milled everything down to an inch and a half. Now it's time to retrace my templates and then we'll uh, cut these out on the bandsaw and finish them up on the router table. So when I was rough cutting, they kind of labeled everything uh, as I was doing it, that way I'm not guessing what part I needed or what I was doing. It just makes it a little bit faster. It just becomes so many parts. So now that everything's roughed out, what we're gonna do is attach our templates and uh, trim them all to size on the router table. I'm gonna use the blue tape trick, but you can use double-sided tape, or you can make a jig for each individual one if you plan on making a bunch of chairs. Whatever floats your boat. So we're gonna get these all ready to rock and then head over to that beautiful little router table that we just built. things are coming together uh, the parts are all cut so uh, next thing to do is glue up but first I've got my spindle sander set to five degrees I had this plan to do so so we get the back lean that I want on the back slats thousand ways to skin a cat if you know a different way to do it on a curve that's not a bandsaw let me know because our bandsaw skills are not that good so I'm gonna see on this back to that five degrees like I said and then we're gonna start with assembly Next order of operations here is mounting the uprights to our legs. We're gonna do this with a domino, but you can use a dowel. You could even use a pocket hole if you wanted to hide those on the inside. But I wanted to do a little bit of integral joinery. To me, it makes it a little bit more elegant. Hit that pro level, just something that um, you don't typically see in an Adirondack chair because they're usually face screwed together because of their purpose. Now, the other thing to keep in mind here is that we have a curve on the bottom here, and it's a super subtle curve. Uh, if you're gonna do a joint like this, cut everything while it's square and then you can come back and I can soften this bottom so we get a nice fit but as you, as you can see right now we've got a little bit of a gap and that should be something I can barely barely touch up to get out of there. I want to cut the dominoes square on a square face. This face is super close to square as well so it should work out. Um, I'll do a sloppy domino and then I'll use my lines here that I marked on the bottom. That'll be in the plan if you want to do it to make sure everything's aligned when I clamp it up. Before I forget though, gotta cut the top 
angles here. I'm gonna go ahead and glue everything up. We're using a fast drying glue, but we would recommend using a glue like Type Bond 3. That's for outdoor use. We're using the flash drying because we make videos. I need this to dry quickly so I can continue to make this video for you guys. And this will hold up fine. Like, don't get me wrong, like this glue is phenomenal. You just wanna use a little bit more of a water resistant outdoor glue if you can. All right, so while the pieces that are glued up are drying, we're gonna lay out our back slats. Now I've got a chunk of maple here, because like I said, I'm doing mine with uh, two different tones of wood. So the back slats are going to be maple, like I said. I'll lay them out on here, rough cut them, and then we'll do this, go through kind of the same process. I could cut them on the CNC, but the kerf on the CNC is not small. It's about an eighth of an inch at minimum. So there's a waste of a lot of wood, and what we've got, I just kind of wanted to go about this route. And then this way, Yins can try this too. Now I'm on to phase, mock everything up and make sure I like the spacing and the sizing. I've got a bunch of parts that are rough, so I'm gonna figure out if I can like prop them up so I can look at it, because that's how I work. I like to look at things. It's weird, I use my eyes. I could use a visible fastener here. I'm gonna use these two and a quarter inch uh, stainless to mount the seat slats in the back. They have a little, tiny little head. Uh, my concern on the seat stuff is it's not quite strong enough, so I'm gonna use an integral joint again. I'm gonna use a domino. So I'm gonna cut these in, get this thing glued up, and then I should be able to start kind of mocking the chair together and see what it's gonna look like. Which is exciting, because building things and then looking at them is exciting. I promise. So I'm gonna pre-finish all of my parts and the Next thing that's on the docket is I'm gonna chamfer the uh, back slats and the top of the seat slats and then get those in the finish so I can work on assembling the base. Back to the router table. So we are dry, which means it's time for more mocking. Let's see what this thing looks like. I made this thing a little bit bigger because I wanted it to, to fit me. And it's screwed up my proportions slightly, so the only thing I think we can do at this point is sit in it, kind of see how it feels. So I'm gonna clamp the crap out of it, and then that's what we're gonna do. Let's, let's see how she be. I feel like it's a rocking chair. <laughs> I think the seat's too high. I, also, I agree. I'm super chubby, and we're gonna use probably four fasteners per leg from the inside, because we can hide them. If you're not comfortable with using fasteners, you can always use a carriage bolt, which is kind of what the traditional way a lot of Adirondack chairs, or chairs of this style are made. But for speed sake, the screws are gonna go a little faster for us. So I'm gonna get this thing together, and then I'm gonna show you a cool way to finish it. Here. We'll burn it in here. What happens if we burn it down? I don't think we're gonna get to that stage. And for my next trick, yes, I belched. We're gonna shishigi bond this bastard because why the hell not? I don't like the look of red oak, so I like to light it on fire. Also, it's supposed to have some benefits when it comes to uh, waterproofing, I think, in its traditional sense. If you guys know the answer there, let me know. So let's get a char on here and then we'll clear it. This is too small. She's cooled off now, which means it's time for finish. Let us spray. We're using this Halcyon Clear Varnish from Total Boat that you can actually spray again in an hour, so it's already dry. It's time for round two, let's go. Now that we've got all the finish on, the last thing left to do is attach all the parts. And I'm gonna do this like an adult and pre-drill because we are sophisticated here. Pinkies up, let's go.
All right, so I'm gonna put back slats on first. And I adjusted for my seat slightly off of the plan, just because I had a little bit wider material than I anticipated using. So we've only got eight slats. I think the plan calls for like 10 or 12, but you can make adjustments there as you like. As I have a little stand, as you can see, and I've marked where I want to mount my first two braces for the back. And so this will have them all at equal height. And then I'll be able to add and use spacers for the rest of them. And that's gonna be a wrap on this one. If you guys dig these projects and you wanna build any yourselves, we got plans for all of them. We also got templates for these two uh, that you can purchase and they'll be sent to you in a nice package so you can make something similar. If you also wanna see more three levels of other stuff, I've got a whole playlist for you right here. Check it out.